We figure that at the moment there's about between 30 and 47 rough sleepers in various different pockets around the city, in various different situations. It's always going to be an uphill struggle to deal with rough sleepers. To me, they're always a symptom of the health of any country's housing situation. And when you actually look into the problems of rough sleepers, they all have difficulties, issues. So they could be psychiatric, they could be health, they could be around payment. It could be 101 things. The worst thing can happen to rough sleepers, they get lost, they get forgotten. And they're so easily forgotten. So you have to bring them into the system so they can actually try and possibly get out of that system. I started living in the van during the really cold snap last year. I was getting well into the minus minus fives and sixes at that stage. There's no insulation, obviously, it's just a normal car, you could say. So yeah, you felt every bit of the cold. It wasn't secure. If I heard somebody walking outside in the middle of the night, or I heard a car pulling in beside me, there's at no point did I feel, okay, hold on, I'm secure, I'm at home. What I had to do was completely just freeze, not move, not make any noise, try to make sure that Mia was kind of calm as well at the same time. That was a big one. You can't really explain this stuff to a dog. So yeah, it was myself and my dog, so I needed to kind of make it in a way that the two of us could as comfortably as possibly sleep in it. And I needed storage as well at the same time, so what I ended up doing was I took out the passenger seat um, and I used the, the cargo box as just some place to put clean clothes. It's waterproof, so socks, underwear, that kind of thing can go in there and at least you know they're dry. And during the day, I can kind of keep this open. It looked like a seat. And then at night, I would have my sleeping bag on the back of this. So when I roll out the sleeping bag, I have a full six foot. By the time I pull this across and my legs are inside the sleeping bag, there's nothing visible. So nobody would even know I was in there and the dog being the other side, of course. She had her own pink bed. I still have her pink bed in there. Just not ideal, but it worked for a while. It did what it was meant to do. And you kind of have to just put up with the heat. There's no air con or anything in there and you can't leave the windows down. You know, you're kind of, it's a hot box, it's torture. It is torture. Um, the cold, look, you can, you can put on more layers. The heat, oh, yeah, it was driving me mad towards the end. The other option at the time was, would have been like a tent or something, but there's too many horror stories of tents. I've met an awful lot of people that are in kind of similar situations. They save up for weeks, they get a tent, they all, all their belongings are in this, like they, they're having a doctor's appointment in town, they go into their appointment, come back out, and their tent is gone, all their, everything's gone. So they're back before square one again, like. It was the only option I had. Like, I didn't have anyone to rely on or anyone that I could rely on. People say that, like, you know, why didn't you go here or why didn't you go there? I didn't have that option. You know, and if you don't have that option, you make the best of what you do have. And what I had is, I had the van. <laughs>